Opponent, on the supposition that the aspirants reach the conditioned Brahman, their non-return, as mentioned in the Upanishad, becomes untenable. For unless it be in the supreme Brahman, there can be no such thing as eternal existence. As a matter of fact, the Upanishads show that an aspirant who goes along the path of the gods does not return. Those going by this path never return to this human cycle of birth and death. Chandogya Upanishad 4.15.5 For them there is no return here. An echo of Brihadaranyaka 6.2.15 Going up through that nerve, one attains immortality. Katu Upanishad 2.3.16 Chandogya 8.6.6 Vedanta To this we say Sutra 10 on the final dissolution of the world of Brahman, they, Saha, together with Tat Adhyakshena, the lord of that world, Param, attained the supreme entity. Ataha, beyond that, Abhidanat, on the strength of Upanishadic declaration. Translation, on the final dissolution of the world of the conditioned Brahman, they attain, along with the Lord of the world, what is higher than this conditioned Brahman, as is known on the strength of the Upanishadic declaration. The idea conveyed is that when the time for the final dissolution of the world of the inferior Brahman is imminent, the aspirants who have acquired full realization there itself attain thereafter, along with Hiranyagarbha, the ruler of that world, the supreme state of Vishnu which is absolutely pure. This kind of liberation by stages has to be admitted on the strength of the Upanishadic texts speaking of non-return, etc., for we established earlier that it is incomprehensible that the Supreme Brahman should be reached by any process of moving forward. Sutra 11. Smritesha. Translation. This is confirmed by Smriti as well. The Smriti also confirms this view. When the time of final dissolution comes at the close of the life of Hiranyagarbha, all of them, with enlightenment already attained, enter into the supreme state along with Hiranyagarbha. Kurma Purana, Purva Bhaga, 12.269. Hence, the conclusion is that the Upanishadic mention about the progress along a path relates to the conditioned Brahman. Doubt. What was the objection in the background, in answer to which the conclusion is presented in the aphorism starting with Bhadari thinks that they are led to the conditioned Brahman, etc. Sutra 437. That objection is now being shown by the aphorisms themselves. Sutra 12. Parangjaiminir muktyatvat jaimini. Jaimini thinks that they are led param to the supreme Brahma. Mukhyatvat that being the primary meaning. Translation, Jaimini thinks that they are led to the Supreme Brahman, that being the primary meaning of the word Brahman. But the teacher Jaimini thinks that in the text, he escorts them to Brahman, Chandogya 4.15.6. What is meant is that he leads them to the Supreme Brahman itself. Why so? Since that is the primary sense. For the Supreme Brahman is the primary meaning of the word Brahman, the inferior one being its secondary meaning. And as between the primary and secondary meanings, one readily understands the primary one alone. Sutra 13. Darshanacha. Translation. 
And this is so because the Upanishad reveals this fact. And the text, going up through that nerve, one gets immortality. Katupanishad 2.3.16, Chandogya Upanishad 8.6.6 shows that immortality is preceded by moving forward, and immortality is logically possible in the Supreme Brahman, but not so in the conditioned Brahman, that being subject to destruction. For the Upanishadic text runs thus, Again, that in which one perceives a second entity is limited, it is mortal. Chandogya 7.24.1 This movement is mentioned in the Kata Upanishad in connection with the Supreme Brahman, for no other knowledge is presented in that context, the topic of the Supreme Brahman alone having been mooted with the text, that which is different from virtue, different from vice, etc. Kata Upanishad 1.2.14 Namaste. So this starts getting a little tricky because the opponent, which in this case is Jaimini, the son of Vyasadeva, the author of these sutras, looks at it in a different way. He looks at it according to his own bias that if you go to Brahman and don't come back, that means the Supreme Brahman, the unconditioned Brahman, without qualities, nirguna. But according to Shankara, this is actually uh, not so, and it is given in the text itself. And this whole section quoting Jaimini is actually the statement of the opponent. So now, why is Brahman taught that sometimes the word Brahman means the supreme Brahman, the unconditioned, and sometimes it means the conditioned Brahman? Well, at the end of the section in the last video, Shankaracharya points out, this is meant for meditation by some aspirants under some conditions, he says. So what is that? That means there is superimposition, a dhyasa, of various meditation objects, such as the sun, prana, the mind, consciousness, etc. There are quite a few of them given in various Upanishads. Because at that stage, the aspirant cannot directly perceive the, or realize, I should say, the unconditioned Brahman. So in this way, he is directed towards conditioned Brahman. And of course, there are many, many forms of worship, mantras, and meditations in various scriptures, including the Smritis, that deal with conditioned Brahman in the form of Shakti, or Shiva, or even Vishnu. Now, curiously enough, we don't find these texts dealing with Lord Brahma. And the reason we don't is that he was cursed by his own daughter. See, in the very beginning of creation, and this is narrated in Shiva Purana, and we went over it back in our series on Shiva Purana, that Brahma had a daughter, and this daughter was so attractive that Brahma himself was attracted towards her. And because of this, he actually had sex with her numerous times and created various orders of beings. So because Brahma can create a mental creation, a mental being, just by his mind, without any seminal injection. He created this daughter to assist in his duty of filling the worlds with population. This is called prajapati. Prajapati means progenitor, the ancestor of everyone. So in this way, Brahma tried to fulfill his duty, but there was some problem, and she was not pleased. 
And she cursed him that nobody will worship you. And he was also cursed by Shiva in a similar way during the incident with the column of light, the first Shiva Lingam, the original symbol or Lingam of Shiva in the beginning of the universe when Brahma lied about that he had seen the top of this column of light when actually he had not. So for that, he lost one of his five heads. That's why Brahma only has four heads. And he was also cursed that he will not be worshipped because of this untruthfulness. So in all of India, I think there are only three temples <laughs> of poor old Lord Brahma. <laughs> there is one, in fact, in Kumbhakonam, right near where I had my ashram some time ago, 12 years ago or something. I used to walk there. On one side was this big Shiva temple, wonderful old Shiva temple. And on the other side, in the middle of town, pretty much neglected by everybody, <laughs> was a temple to Lord Brahma. So we don't worship Lord Brahma, have you noticed? <laughs> And the reason we don't is because of these curses. But on the other hand, Vishnu, who was truthful in this incident with the column of light, column of fire, as it's sometimes called, the Agni Lingam. In fact, I lived right across the street from the Agni Lingam temple commemorating this event. And I used to hear from the priests there, all kinds of interesting details about it. <laughs> but that's another video. What I want to share with you now is that Vishnu was granted worship on an equal level with Shiva because of his truthfulness. And this has led to a situation where it is often confused whether Shiva or Vishnu is the primary deity. And of course, it's Shiva. He was first. And he's the only one who is beyond the material creation. That is why Vishnu, even though he changed himself into the shape of a boar and went tunneling down uh, through the earthly planets and the subterranean planets, he could not find the bottom of this column of light. And actually, neither could Brahma. And the reason for this is that Shiva is beyond the material universe. Huh? Shivam paro vyaktat. Shiva is beyond the material world. So he is the supreme. But he allows Vishnu equal worship because of Vishnu's wonderful qualities. But Vishnu, being one of the uh, material gods, actually, he is the uh, god of maintenance. So he sees the material world as real. Nevertheless, Shiva also granted him the power to bestow liberation. The thing is, though, Vishnu is very cautious with it. He doesn't give it easily. I mean, he doesn't even give darshan very easily. I worshipped Vishnu in the form of Krishna for years, well, starting from like 1967. And I didn't get darshan of him until 2001 in Kauai, after I retired from business and I was camped out in a forest near the beach, just chanting, 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 64 rounds a day for weeks, no, for months, three months. And finally, I got Krishna Darshan for about 10 seconds. So he's very uh, parsimonious is the word by giving out his Darshan and even more so by giving out liberation. And he is known to have the taste for the rules and regulations of the Vedas 
Vaidika Puja or Vaidika Bhakti, Vaidya or Vaidhi Bhakti. That means the worship according to rules and regulations of the Vedas, Vaidhi. So he is not very easy to please. Whereas Shiva is known as Ashutosha. Ashutosha means easily pleased. So if anyone gives him even a little bit of service, a little bit of honor, chanting one of his mantras, huh? or doing some small service like lighting a lamp and offering it to him, lighting some incense, or especially bathing his lingam form with water. Oh, he's very pleased. <laughs> and he very easily awards darshan. That is my experience anyway. So that's why we worship Shiva as the primary God, uh, even in these videos, giving the mantras at the end. So you should try this. If you haven't tried worshiping Shiva, give it a try, because he lives as long as the material world and his planet is not destroyed until the very, very end. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>